All right then. So again, um, thank you again, Shanice, for that um, welcoming prayer. And uh, we're going to um, start off our first thing on the agenda. Um, as I made um, note of, this is our first meeting since 2021. And so we are going to go through our minutes of 2021 just to get everybody, everybody back on, on in line in what has happened. And our Suzanne is going to go ahead and um, review our minutes. Right? Okay, just a moment while I pull those up. All right. <clears throat> on Sunday, November 28th at 2 I'm sorry, on Sunday, November 28th, 2021 at 5 p.m., the St. Hilda's Alumni Association hosted its annual general meeting. The meeting was hosted by the outgoing vice president, Dr. Mala Betton, by the Zoom video platform. The meeting commenced with the introduction of the available members of the outgoing executive body and with the singing of the school hymn. The body then viewed a video address or a presentation by the outgoing president at the time who was Shanice Walford. During her remarks, she reflected on and thanked the body for its achievements during her tenure. Descriptions of the board positions were provided by the outgoing executive members who had formerly filled the roles and who had knowledge of what was required. There were a number of participants, and I'm going to just pull that number up. There were 37 participants in the meeting that resulted in the election of the following board members. Uh, the president and vice president, respectively, were Drs. Mala Benton and Caitlin Williams Beecher. The secretary and assistant secretary, respectively, were Roseanne Breckenridge Pickett and Natalie Walker. The treasurer and the treasurer position was filled by Christine Walker. The PRO and activities team included the following individuals: Rakisha Newby, Nellie Ann Scott, Nelsa English Johnson, and Jody Ann Dill. The student liaison officers were Kadeen Henry and Lacey Morris Wright. And the coordinating team PRO team were Carlene Allison and Stacey Ann Blair. Among we're not, the other, we're not, we're not, we're not. I'm sorry. Among the other issues discussed in the meeting um, was the need for follow-up communications regarding the dues amounts and methods of payment. There were also discussions about the opportunity to have a web page posted on the website that belongs to an association of Jamaican alumni association organization. This web page would allow the St. Hilda's alumni organization to accept payment through the platform, there is, um, I'm sorry. I'm just reviewing something. I have a typo here. There was also an opportunity for the St. Hilda's alumni organization to later have an independent website that would have its own payment capabilities. There was also discussion about the frequency of future meetings. This is an issue that is yet to be finalized, but it was proposed that there would be at least quarterly meetings. And I'm trying to, on my phone here, get to the other pages, but for some reason it is not showing. Just a moment. Mala, the version you have, do you see the additional pages? No, it was just one page. No, it's two. It was oh. two pages. Oh, there was a updates. Updates. All right, Christine, you can read the, the last part. I'm gonna read for the first time, so I might make mistakes. Re-executive Sher Jacqueline Shirley will be continuing to work on the fundraising coordinating team. Reduced contributions will now be made through the SpurOpen.com platform using the following link. And it's listed. This will allow Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, American Express, Service cover card payments. Yearly dues to be an active member of the alumni. The annual fee is three thousand Jamaican dollars, with retirees 
been 101,500 Jamaican dollars. The guidance department has reached out to us for support, internet connectivity of the students, $50, $500 from every dues paid will go towards the guidance department. Any questions, please reach out to Dr. Marla Betton or email the Alumni Association. Upcoming events, ready for work series and the grade nine career week, April 2022. Teachers Day, October 5, 2022. Spirit Week, 2022, November 2022. That's, that's what I have. All right, thank you so much for completing that. So um, in general, from that meeting, uh, we had um, elected our members and had branched off into subcommittees. For 2022, the year started off with the third form career week, which was done a little bit before Easter break. And that was successfully carried out with multiple alumni from the diaspora and locally participating um, via Zoom, because at the start of 2022, we were still thinking about COVID and a lot of virtual um, use of um, the meeting was being held. Um, it was successfully held virtually with only alumni members being present for the third form career week, which was, I think, the first in the history of St. Elizabeth's. And so it was a successful career week um, staging in 2022. Um, uh, furthermore, for the rest of the year, we were, a, we were trying to do the launch of the um, Work for Work series for the fifth and sixth formers, but due to um, the trans, the, the students going in between um, online and in-person, getting back into in-person classes, there was no time before their exams for that series to be held in 2022. And then um, going down to our um, other activities that ended up happening in 2022, we were able to um, sponsor a student um, in September, first form up with a scholarship of $12,000 to pay their um, school fee, which is what the school fee is, Cintillas per year, uh, for incoming first former. Um, did I send you the letter? Um, yes. What was her name again? I, my memory, I don't have that one, on, but um, my treasurer has the documents. And um, uh, we, we okay. were able to do that. What was her name again? It's coming up. Um... Michaela Michaela James. Michaela James from Ocherius. And so her family was very grateful. We took photos and um, we gave her a little certificate and they were really grateful. So twelve thousand doesn't sound like a lot of money to the average working Jamaican, but it was it meant the world to her and her family um, going forward. So Michaela had um Pro progressed through the year and has done very well. And um, for the year 2023, for September, she didn't need any additional support. Her family was good to go. Mm -hmm. um, so that was then wrapping down November Spirit Week. We did participate virtually and in an online um, online support in the school. The school was in communication with us, and the principal did reach out to me personally to help support with um, one of the events and we donated um, $10,000 worth of um, items towards uh, an event that they had on Spirit Week where they had um, basically fetted some of the students to something like a tea party um, on that week. So that's the 2022 wrap up. Um, at this point, I'm gonna ask the treasurer to give her a little summary of um, our financial status currently. Well, we can start off saying there is some money, but the amount of money needs a lot to be desired. Because 
in 2021, on the Jamaican side, we only collected $12,000, which translates into four persons contributing. And then we had two persons contributing in US dollars, amounting to net, net because this um, platform that we use collects a 7% service charge. So we got $19.31 and $27.90 for the US with a total of $47.21. And the same for the Jamaican that this 7% was taken out. So we only have 24,180. And sorry, when I said this, I was incorrectly including the 2022 amounts. So the 24,000 I'm talking about consists of 11,160 from 2021 and $13,020 from 2022. So you see, we're not getting the support as far as Jews are concerned. So no wonder the things that we can contribute to is very limited. And even the amounts Marla mentioned, the 22,000 that was donated in cash and kind, it came from an old fund that we had at First Global and this account is now closed. So um, my appeal here based on this report is that $24,000 Jamaican plus 50, 47 US can't go very far. So we really are appealing to all our members and those who know past students to encourage them to give towards our worthy cause so we can really perform as an alumni and be proud of what we can do for our school because we all came through those gates and benefited in life. Thank you very much for that um, spirited appeal from my... Oh, and to note, this is 2023. I forgot that. And we're in November and we got zero contribution. Including the person on the screen. All the ones. <laughs> we are guilty, but I'm <laughs> gonna write it. But I want you guys to write it too. <laughs> Listen, my money going going by next week. How about you? <laughs> yes. So we, as we see, time waits. Time waits on no one, and that is the realization that we reached another November, and time waits on no one. And uh, as you see, we are here again, and uh, yeah, we, we we need to catch on to um, our spur open site. If, if anybody searches in the WhatsApp chats, in the in the Facebook posts, on the Instagram posts, the, the, the link is still there, it's still active, and we can I'm gonna reshare them after the end of the meeting. I see we have now 25 participants. According to this, we have seven minutes counting down that this the link might close. If we haven't finished our talk, we'll just re-re-log back into the, the, the meeting and um and start again. Um, in terms of continue again the um the meeting so that is our financial status we have not had anything in the coffers officially since 2022 um 2023 no money has come in so what activities have we done in 2023 we continue to support the third form career day and um jody and bill um i believe took the mantle with this, um, she linked with um, the guidance department and was able to coordinate the presence of um, alumni MES members via um, virtually and also persons that came in person to speak at the school because this was now a hybrid event. They had speakers in person at the um, at the uh, auditorium. And I was very grateful for a person stepping in because this year professionally has been very challenging. I branched out as a entrepreneur, as a small business owner, and I've had very little time 
to co commit to my role as president. And I apologize, but it were a team effort, so anybody needs, they can reach out to me, and we will definitely try. So this meeting is our first step. So um, in terms of some of the expenses that we had, we had expenses um, in 2022 where we had committed to a professional Zoom. And when it came up for re restarting, I just decided it was not worth an expense. That's why we're on just a regular Zoom account that we have to re-log in. It wasn't worth the investment in terms of that we, we only logged in for one meeting under the professional account. Therefore, it wasn't worth the investment. Oh, no, to that per, um, Jackie, yes. she's saying that she has a meeting. Yes. So she could. Yes. So we definitely host. next time we would definitely. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, Jackie, I want to can switch you over to host right now. No, you said you have a meeting to go to. I remember that much. You said you had a meeting to go to. Yes, I do. Otherwise, I could always do this. Yes. I have a hundred people limit. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll gladly do that. So we don't have to using this one. But we were on pro, but it didn't make any sense. So that much we have. At this point, um, I will open the field. Persons can start um, maybe put up any questions they have or any more of our committee members that want to say something. I know Dr. Beecher ha is supposed to be talking about one of the hot button hot topic topics that came up a lot in our WhatsApp group. Um, I don't know if you can do it in five minutes. Caitlin? Hi. Yes, I will have to do it in five minutes. I have two rambunctious boys that are keeping me very busy. <laughs> Um, so we've had situations where there have been complaints by parents on social media or family members of students in terms of, you know, treatment of their child or ward at the institution um, in conjunction with the, I think it was the New York chapter, Mala, that we yeah. reached out, that we reached out to the school board and to the school administration and they wrote us a letter to say that they are unaware of any complaints that we are referring to as in in terms of persons making a complaint to the school or to the school board so there really is nothing that they can look into at this point uh, the, apologies for the noisy background <laughs> Yes. Um, so they're saying they have really nothing, uh, anything concrete to investigate. So they're not going to open any investigations into all the allegations because in all the PTA meetings and everything, no parent has, ha has expressed openly their concerns with anything. So there is no basis for them to investigate. So our suggestion is that we encourage persons that if they have a problem to put it in writing, if it is that they want to put it in writing, send it to the school, send it to the board and probably send a copy to us so that we can at least from that side, we know that there is something concrete that we can follow up with. But just following up with social media posts when nothing is said directly to the administration, it's a little bit hard on our side for us to advocate for the students because the school board is not going to do anything if they don't see anything for them to really to really do. So the encouragement, especially if you know any of these persons is, hey, put it in writing so that we can actually do something about it. And um, I believe Mrs. Johnson is, has one year left at the school starting in September of 2024. She's going on pre-retirement leave. And then the vice principal is going to act for a year. And then after that year, in 2025, they're going to employ a new principal. So let's see how things go in the new school year. And uh, we take it from there. Thank you for that, Caitlin. Um, and uh, the update we got about um, the principal going on pre-retirement leave that came from our Professor Liz Thomas Hope, who sends her apologies for not being here today due to being out of the country. And we have her on the school board definitely 
given us feedback on what is going on at the school board level. Um, and um, a correction as noted in the um, chat from Yasmin, yes, it's the global group. It's not the New York chapter anymore. It's um, the St. Hilda's Alumni Global. So we are the well, Jamaican thank you. and they are the global chapter. They have rebranded. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you, Yasmin. So we have about a minute left before we have to log off and then log back in. Um, is there any pressing issues that anybody wants to say at this time? I've, I've acknowledged Daniel Coward's number. I'll be adding her to the WhatsApp group. Anybody else? Like I know we only have a few seconds. On the issue of not being able to investigate um, incidents reported on social media, I beg to defer. I believe at least from a risk management um, and also an image perspective, the school needs to take these sources of information seriously. Um, so I don't think it should be a blanket we will not investigate simply because the source of information is social media. Well, I encourage everybody to log back in. We're going to log back in for an extra 15 minutes. We won't be very long just so that we can allow everybody to have a, a, um, 